Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you could see it and you could purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the third of the Maitre du Temps complications. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, and on my wrist, this is Chapter 3. A watch that's created as a collaboration between Andreas Streller and Kari Voudelainen, it features aesthetic and engineering elements of both master watchmakers. Brought together by lifelong watch industry executive Stephen Holtzman, masters ranging from Peter Spigmarin to Daniel Rook to Roger Dubuis, and of course, Voudelainen and Streller come together to create collaborative efforts such as this one. And relative to the chapters 1 and 2, which are unwearably huge and unfathomably complicated, the chapter 3 is easily the most wearable and practical. A dual time watch with a moon phase and a date, it's 42 millimeters in rose gold in this iteration. The timepiece reasonably wearable and not terribly thick, 14 millimeters thick, but with a concave bezel that allows any dress cuff to ramp up over its side, it wears effectively as one of the thinnest 14 millimeter watches you'll encounter. The lug shaping is excellent to accommodate a small wrist like my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see the lugs which span 50 millimeters from point to point do drape themselves elegantly around a smaller wrist and the spacing between the lugs 22 millimeters giving the watch a nice modern broad planted and proportional stance even as most of the design cues are distinctly vintage. The watch wears comfortably on my wrist and I can recommend it for a wrist as small as 14 and a half to 15 centimeters circumference. The strap is a handsome piece and to make the watch wear more easily on a small wrist, you can see that a curved spring bar was used and the lugs were drilled very close to the case, which means that in conjunction with the curved bar, there's no impediment to full motion of the strap. You can pull the strap straight down around a small wrist and you can see the pivot points of the straps are actually much closer together than the 50 millimeter lug to lug dimension. So consider this a watch 42 millimeters that wears a bit smaller than that. The strap is thickly cut with medium rectangular scale alligator leather, black, with a semi-gloss finish, a monotone stitch, a thick cross section. You can see that the swell nicely matches the swell of the lugs with a simple Maitre du Temps branded pin buckle for easy on-the-fly adjustability. The timepiece has a handsome and sinuous compound curved case with incredible visual dynamics. When you get close, you can see not only is it a handsome compound curvature, but there's a sort of downward and inward inflection to these dished lugs such that the watch thins out dramatically to almost a wasp wasted profile and you can see the complexity of these curves. They do incredible things allowing the light to dance across the surface of the watch like a flame. It's truly one of the most intriguing and complex contour systems I've ever encountered on any case and that includes the likes of Moser. Usually ace at stuff like this but Maitre du Temps, this is probably the most complex case contouring I've ever encountered. The bezel features a concave profile like many Patek Philippe and IWC Portuguese watches. It helps to visually pair the mass of the watch. The crown is an extravagant custom part and so is the the dial, a guilloche pattern with a number of different facets. You can see there is a sort of a matte finished black underneath the hour track and each individual Roman numeral has a separate section of the dial. You can see it's been deliberately segmented. There is a dimple style minutes track outboard and then there is a sunray rose lathe guilloche at center with cross hatching or a hobnail micro texture on sub registers for the calendar as well as the petite second. Now there's a moon phase down at approximately 4.30 and there is a quick set system if I can find the intermediate setting. It takes a little bit of hunting to find the intermediate setting used to adjust the moon phase and the quick set for the date. The quick set system in one direction will adjust the date and in the other direction it will adjust the moon phase. So you have the ability to quickly and easily manipulate both. Now the watch beats way at 21,600 vibrations per hour and it features a unique trick. I mentioned that this crown is entirely bespoke. There is a coaxial pusher that removes, I'm actually going to move my minute hand now. Oh, there we go. I found the quick set for the calendar in the moon phase, but I am going to change the time and you can see that there is a jumping barrel down at 6 o'clock. That is how the watch uses two 12-hour rotating barrels to display the 24-hour time format of the second time zone. You also have a hand-painted 
complex alloy of manganese, magnesium, and aluminum that's used to create these barrels. A hand-painted day-night indicator up at 12 o'clock. So you have an AM-PM indicator for that second time zone, and you can see that the barrel's jumping back and forth at 6 o'clock, and the day-night indicator rolling from day to night and back again at 12 o'clock. Now you might wonder, how do you set the watch if essentially the two move in sync? Well, you press the decoupler, and now, once you've set the barrel for the second time zone independently, you can set the time at center. And remember, that time at center is what drives the moon as well as the date. Put everything back, and you can see that if I were to engage again, the two are once again coordinated. But it is a very clean system, a trap door that effectively hides the second time zone when you don't want it. This is the work of Andreas Streller, who's famous for creating watches with hidden complications or elegant minimalism in their display of complication. Think Moser and C, perpetual calendar, and you get the idea. Now turn it all over and you can see the SCH03 movement. This is also a collaboration between Streller and Voudelainen, but here's where Voudelainen seems to take a little bit of the lead. You can see the finishing style is very carry, open, extravagantly finished, but in a traditional fashion with an interior angle at the center. You could note very carefully that the wheels of the train featuring a branched motif that is designed to emulate the symbol, the corporate symbol of Michael Dutemps. Glorious Cote de Genève across the bridges. Engine turned perlage on the base plate. You can see every screw head black polished with a chamfered slot and then mirrored anglage on the edge of all the bridges. You can see it lighting up. That is a true hand finished anglage, not a machined bevel. Plus you can see the barrels from the reverse side. Manual wind, 36 hour power reserve. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It has a free sprung balance with an overcoil hairspring to help it keep excellent time in any position via the overcoil and to resist shock due to the free sprung architecture, a favorite of Andreas Streller. A beautifully executed traditional movement with a most untraditional of complications. You can see the watch is a fusion of Kerry and Andreas Streller's personal aesthetic and engineering sensibilities. See this one and make it your watch on the watch box.